How glorious that day in 1492, when Christopher Columbus first sighted this mountain, towering above the blue Caribbean. Mount Isabella, he named it, and the island he called La Española, thus honoring the Queen of Spain and the country she ruled. His men came ashore on such a beach, and nearby attempted the first settlement, which unhappily did not survive. Ruins today mark the advance of the colonists as they moved across the island. The city of Santo Domingo was founded in 1496 by Bartholomew Columbus and its earliest fortress still dominates the harbor. Above the walled city in this splendid castle, Diego Columbus, son of the discoverer, ruled for many years over the colonies of New Spain. Guided by ancient Spanish records, the Dominican government has recently completed an exact restoration of his fortress palace, refurnishing it with priceless antiques of the early colonial era. From the museums of Spain, from the Vatican, and from descendants of Columbus, these treasures were acquired. Nearly a million dollars was spent on the project of restoring to its former splendor this first palace built in the New World. In 1523, construction was begun on a great cathedral, a superb example of Spanish Renaissance architecture. It is the oldest cathedral in the Americas. Just beyond the main entrance is the magnificent tomb of Columbus, a shrine for visitors from the entire world. From the plaza which bears his name, Columbus dominates the center of the old city. Under a long-range plan, other time-worn buildings, which have withstood more than four centuries, are being faithfully restored to preserve the historic atmosphere of this oldest city in the Americas. Here were built the first churches, schools, and hospitals in the New World. History is recalled as one sees the narrow streets of early days, the weathered buildings, and the mellow city wall. While the Dominican people revere and maintain the relics of colonial times, it is the modern city of Ciudad Trujillo which typifies the progress made in their country during the last few decades. Ciudad Trujillo is the model capital city of a model republic. Its clean city streets, its prosperous new shopping districts, and its air of activity and busy commerce all belie its location on a tropical Caribbean island. One of the world's most beautiful avenues, named for our own George Washington, parallels the sea for several miles and leads out to the many new suburbs where quiet beauty is seen on every side. On the Avenida, the whole Trujillo Monument is a symbol of Dominican friendship for the United States. An ambitious building program is being carried on, and great new structures rise on every side as the advancing work of construction goes forward. These are the signposts of progress. While much of the material for use in such public works must still be imported, recent development of Dominican quarries has provided a good source of beautiful native marble for practical use as well as for decoration. This is a whole new industry using the latest Italian equipment and techniques. An abundance of limestone makes possible the expanding cement industry, producing enough for export, for the road building system, and to carry on the low cost housing program which is providing good homes for all workers. More than $20 million will be spent to complete this long range plan. Industrialization is typified by the many new factories situated in pleasant suburban locations, unlike crowded factory areas in many other countries. A supply of safe milk is of great importance. In a modern dairy, local milk is pasteurized and bottled, not only for sale, but also for free distribution to mothers and children in several health centers. The widespread cultivation of peanuts has become a niche farm income. In a modern plant, the most advanced American equipment and methods for processing the edible oil make certain an abundant supply for all domestic needs. Production has been increased until peanut oil has become a major commodity for shipment abroad. Output reached a high of more than a million gallons last year. A new use for the versatile peanut converts former waste material into an excellent nutritive cattle feed with very high protein content. On 
Around the great haciendas, large dairy herds are multiplying, and in huge sanitary barns are selected breeds, especially adapted to the tropics, thus ensuring a continuing supply of excellent quality milk. Thoroughbred horses are raised in the country. Saddle and harness making is still a gainful occupation. Some of the world's most expensive breeding stock is available for improving local cattle strains. The many trophies won by Dominican breeds in breed international competition illustrate the success of this extensive program. Cattle producers is enormous because meat and meat products are exports of growing importance. There has generally been an abundance, so neighboring Caribbean countries have been supplied with Dominican meat products since the beginning of the Second World War. Expanding new markets in South America have brought an increased demand. Sausages, frankfurters, hams are processed under the most sanitary conditions. Even canned meats will soon be available. Soap and lard are very profitable byproducts of the industry. High-grade leather is tanned locally, and hides are another export item. No one must go without shoes. Good quality footwear has long been manufactured and sold at very low prices. The growth and expansion of the textile industry has eliminated, to a great extent, former dependence on imports of raw materials and fabrics. Skilled Dominican workers can now turn out a wide variety of finished goods produced under excellent conditions in well-equipped, modern factories. Other former imports for the drug and chemical industry have been drastically reduced since the establishment of an ultra-modern pharmaceutical plant, where medical needs of every description are compounded, manufactured, and packaged. Vaccines, antibiotics, and serums, so necessary for the control and eradication of disease, are being supplied for distribution through retail outlets, to public health clinics, and to the many hospitals. More than 250 different medical and chemical items are now available. Surprisingly enough, condensed milk is now being processed in Ciudad Trujillo now feasible because of the recent establishment of a can-making plant. A domestic supply of tin cans is bringing about the development of a number of new industries. It is projected that bumper crops of vegetables and fruits will be preserved by canning. Very soon, fruit juices will be canned for wide distribution. A new bottle manufacturing plant averages 100,000 bottles a day for the beverage industry. In addition, fine hand-blown glass for the tourist trade and for export is being produced. Central European immigrants carry on this traditional art. Christmas tree ornaments are being made here in the Caribbean. Rum, the traditional drink of the tropics, is supplemented by beer, the beverage of moderation. In a modern plant on the outskirts of Ciudad Trujillo, the newest machinery from the United States is used in processing of fine Pilsner-type beer, which can compete with America's finest. It is interesting to note that the brewmaster learned his trade in Brooklyn. Through the port cities comes the tremendous volume of raw materials needed to supply the demands of the industry. One may see on the busy docks the great variety of imports to be used in manufacturing and to carry on the building program, for nearly everything from abroad must come by ship. Production increases of export commodities has reversed the former balance of trade. Until recent years, only agricultural products were exported. But now the value of manufactured goods shipped out far exceeds such imports. True sign of a stable economy. Air and seaport development are prime necessities of Dominican industrialization. At the mouth of the River Heine, not far from the capital city, a new deep water terminal has been completed, facing on the Caribbean. The deep harbor can handle all but the largest ships afloat. Three of five planned dry docks are already in use, 
and small vessels are being constructed and repaired. Across the river stands the largest sugar mill in the world, Central Rio Haina. Sugar is big business in the Dominican Republic. However, sales of Dominican sugar to the United States are only about 6% of total output, while 75% of Dominican imports come from the United States. Here a southern neighbor is continually expanding production and proving itself a dependable source of supply. This was the first country in the New World to produce sugar, and it has built the sugar industry, as well as the rest of its national economy, solely by its own efforts. Rio Haina Mill can process 15,000 tons of raw sugar daily, operating on a 24-hour basis. Two great feeder lines move the cane through a complex system of multiple rollers, and the process is repeated six times until every drop of juice is extracted. The residue is carried up to be used as fuel to generate power in the tremendous boilers to drive the centrifuges where raw sugar is extracted. Molasses, another sugar mill product, is held in huge tanks for bulk shipment. Daily great ships from many countries load Dominican sugar for sale in the world market. Mining of high-grade gypsum for the cement industry has recently been developed. Rock salt has long been taken from the extensive deposits of the Southwest. In the same region, bauxite is mined, new source of supply for the aluminum plants of the United States. At Cabo Rojo, a new port facility was constructed, especially for ocean-going ore carriers. A continuous program of highway expansion is one of the soundest investments a confident people can make in their national economy. Modern concrete highways, built with Dominican cement, will soon link all parts of the country and will open the way to further development of the nation's rich natural resources. To industry, good roads mean lower transportation costs and faster deliveries, while to ranchers and farmers, they mean an easier route to market and greater profit. Modern road building equipment speeds construction of the new highways and bridges, which lead to a new era of prosperity. Despite the expansion of industrialization, Agricultural products continue to be the cornerstone of the Republic's economy. Always a profitable export crop, Dominican coffee is used throughout the world for blending with other types to add the finest bouquet, flavor, and taste. Whether grown by small farmers or on large estates, modern processing plants ensure top quality and accurate grading. Nearly $40 million worth of coffee was exported last year. This might be Asia, but these rice paddies are in a northern valley of the Republic, where intensive cultivation during the past few years has made it the rice bowl of the Caribbean. An abundant supply of water circulated through 80 canal systems, in which the government has invested substantially, is opening other areas to cultivation. A vast network of concrete-lined irrigation canals crisscrosses the land taking water to thousands of acres of once arid soil. Deep in the mountains, high dams hold back the water, not only for use in irrigation, but for hydroelectric installations, which create the power necessary to turn the wheels of industry. Our output and demand are an accurate index of economic and industrial progress. Sisal is another example of a successful new crop made possible by the extensive irrigation system. For many years, pure drinking water has been plentiful throughout the country. From the air, Santiago is dominated by the new Peace Monument. The second city of the Republic, Santiago is the commercial and banking center of an ever-expanding agricultural region. A broad farm loan program administered through the Agricultural Bank encourages this expansion and helps small planters to buy more land, seed, and machinery. The cigar and cigarette manufacturing industry is centered in Santiago. In this clean, modern factory, cigars and cigarettes are produced using American methods and equipment. 
popular priced brands are packaged under the most sanitary conditions. On Hispaniola, white men first used tobacco. Through the years, it continues to be a good income producing crop and a valuable export commodity since nearly 80% of the annual harvest is shipped abroad. Unlike the plantation system for cultivation of sugarcane, small farms grow most of the country's cacao. This odd fruit contains the pulp-covered beans, which will eventually go into the manufacture of superior chocolate. Sanchez cacao from the Dominican Republic is world famous. Nearly $25 million worth of these famous Sanchez beans are exported annually, not only to the United States, but to European countries as well. On the beautiful north shore of the island overlooking the Atlantic is the cooperative colony of Sosua, established in 1940. Dairying is the principal source of livelihood for a large group of Jewish refugees who have now become full-fledged Dominican citizens. Carrying on an old world tradition, they produce several varieties of excellent cheese and fine creamery butter for shipment and refrigerated trucks to supply the luxury hotels of the cities. High in the Central Mountain Range is the Valley of Constanza, where extensive forest resources are located. Finished pine boards ready for use supply domestic needs as well as a growing export demand. Native timber is cut at altitudes up to 10,000 feet for this Caribbean lumbering industry. In the fertile valley, which resembles Switzerland, new farm colonies have been established. Settlers from other lands have been made welcome. The newest arrivals have been Japanese families who have brought their oriental culture and their knowledge of the soil they too can one day become citizens of this model republic. Not only housing, but farm machinery, seeds and financial assistance are offered these newcomers to encourage this tolerant immigration program. An unusual assortment of flowers is being cultivated in the valley, dahlias, carnations, lilies, daisies. Through intensive truck farming, an abundance of fresh vegetables can be grown the year round. A new highway over the mountains has made this farm produce readily available to the city markets. Visitors are always impressed by the cleanliness of these model markets. Established in every city, they sell just about everything. Under the most sanitary conditions, an amazing variety of fresh foods is displayed. At these indoor markets, one may buy many vegetables we know. All the usual citrus fruits, as well as fruits and vegetables native only to the tropics. At San Cristobal is the National Institute of Agriculture, the largest school for agronomy in the West Indies, where thousands of farmers have been trained. Experiments are being carried on to determine the suitability of crops once alien to the Caribbean. Pineapple is a new fruit crop, and crossbreeding has resulted in a higher corn yield. Tung trees will supply oil for a growing paint industry. Public schools at all levels are free and a broad plan will assure the benefits of education for all age groups throughout the entire country. Normal schools in the cities and in the rural areas as well are graduating teachers needed to staff the many new schools. Physical culture is just as important in the educational program as training the mind. In the tremendous new municipal stadium of Ciudad Trujillo, where baseball and other sports events are held, field day exercises show the success of this concept. Inter-American friendship is expressed by thousands of students as they parade down the Avenida on Pan American Day to honor the memories of Cordell Hull and George Washington. In 1538, a papal decree established the University of Santo Domingo. And today, students attend classes in these fine new buildings of University City. Young men and young women can here obtain higher education in various fields and tuition costs are kept to a bare minimum. In addition to law, economics and the humanities, the university curriculum includes pharmacy, chemical science and engineering. 
In a new speech laboratory, language classes are offered for students who wish to further their linguistic ability. The schools of medicine and dentistry every year graduate hundreds of young doctors and dentists who will study further in selected fields, enter private medical practice, or go into the various public health organizations. The physical welfare of its citizens has always been an important concern of the state. Provisions for public health services of every kind have perhaps received one of the largest appropriations in every annual budget. Early treatment of childhood diseases will help to ensure a strong, healthy adult population. While great emphasis is placed on the care of children, Free medical and dental services are available for the needy of all ages. Clinics, public dispensaries, hospitals for mothers and children, for workers, and for specialized care have been constructed, equipped, staffed, and maintained under continuing social welfare legislation. To fulfill one of the prime objectives of the World Health Organization, an extensive campaign of insect control is systematically carried on which has all but eradicated many diseases which formerly plagued the area. Radio telephone circuits link Ciudad Trujillo with other world capitals, while VHF circuits tie together the provincial cities. A growing television network covers the country. TV and radio programs are broadcast by the powerful transmitters of La Voz Dominicana. The best in Dominican music is exemplified by the National Symphony Orchestra. The handsome Palace of Fine Arts is part of the educational system and was established to give wide scope to all cultural endeavors. Classes in music, painting, sculpture, and the dance are given at no cost for talented young people who wish to continue their study of the arts. Works of the students, as well as several permanent exhibits, are on display. In the new auditorium of the Fine Arts Building, weekly plays and concerts are presented during the season. Consequence of its Spanish background, the Dominican Republic has always been a Catholic country. However, there is complete freedom of religion. There are a number of Protestant churches of various denominations throughout the country. In addition to Sosawa, there is a Jewish community in the capital city whose members worship in a beautiful new synagogue. Impressive churches and cathedrals are seen in every town, and holy days are widely observed as national holidays. Easter week is the occasion for special religious services. The Archbishop conducts Pontifical Mass on Holy Thursday evening in the great Primate Cathedral before civil and military leaders and members of the diplomatic corps. The Good Friday procession, led by Roman centurions, is the climax of the year for devout Catholics. A true manifestation of religious fervor the solemn parade is attended by thousands who follow the image of the Virgin and the symbol of the cross through the city streets far into the night. Bulwark of Caribbean defense, the Dominican Navy is ever on the alert. Young midshipmen are taught the fundamentals of seamanship aboard the Navy's four-masted bark. Traditions of the sea learned under sail remain basic principles in a modern Navy. After training in advanced military tactics at the various service academies and developing their bodies in a number of sports, these young men will graduate as officers. 
proudly they will carry on the patriotic ideals of the armed forces. Newest of the services, the modern Air Force has every technical device needed for its efficient operation, and aircraft range from training planes to the latest types of jet fighters. On the south coast, an immense military airport has been completed serving as another link in the defense of the Caribbean and the Canal Zone. The government is rapidly enlarging present airports and building new ones to accommodate the ever-growing tourist trade and for use by its own airline in shipping export commodities. The arrival of the jet age prompted construction of the new international airport and the largest planes in the world can now land here at the crossroads of the Caribbean. The new jet planes of several airlines will bring an increasing number of visitors who wish to see for themselves this land of peace and prosperity. You are always welcome in this vacation paradise where there is so much to see and do. Attractive resort hotels are set high in the mountains amid beautiful landscapes where every pleasure may be enjoyed. Perhaps you will prefer the seashore and broad sandy beaches inviting you to stay longer. The great luxury hotels in the capital city are internationally famous for their modern facilities, excellent service, and pleasant social atmosphere. You may just want to sit in the sun, swim in Olympic-sized pools, or relax with friendly companions. You may even have a bungalow of your own with complete privacy yet with excellent hotel service. Surely you will enjoy trying native food and new gastronomical delights. After a tour of the old city downtown, you will want to visit the International Fairground, built a few years ago as a tourist attraction and to celebrate 25 years of progress achieved during the era of Trujillo. In permanent exhibits, one may see a capsule of the remarkable development of this country. The magnificent theater of water and light presents the greatest spectacle of the fairgrounds. In this combination restaurant and amphitheater, classical and folk ballets, as well as musical extravaganzas, are performed against an indescribably beautiful background. The numerous modern buildings at the fairgrounds are now used as permanent government offices, and nearly all departments have been relocated in this easily accessible area. Maintenance of monetary stability and secure international credit is the foundation on which the entire structure of prosperity has been erected. This is one of the few debt-free nations in the world today, and one not interested in aid, only in trade. Modeled on our Federal Reserve System, the Central Bank is the guardian of the financial reserves of the country. On a par with the U.S. dollar, the Dominican peso is backed by gold deposits in the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Landmark of Ciudad Trujillo by night or by day is the splendid National Palace, the very heart of the Republic. Orderly processes of representative government are initiated in a bicameral legislature. Members are elected by popular vote and sessions are presided over by cabinet officers. Their decisions are implemented by the acts of the president. The dreams of the founding fathers Duarte, Sanchez and Mella have been more than fulfilled. The nation has been brought from chaos to stability, from poverty to prosperity, to stand as a shield against the forces of communism by the heroic efforts of Generalissimo Rafael Trujillo. Greatest monument to Trujillo is the Dominican Republic itself. Small wonder loyal Dominicans revere this great man and continue to look to him for guidance. With him, progress never stops.